In this video, I'm going to show you how you can install Splash on your Windows PC so you can easily and quickly scrape dynamic websites and JavaScript websites using Python. So Splash is a lightweight browser from Scraping Hub um, that has an HTTP API built in that we can send off requests to that it renders the page for us and returns the information back. What this means is that we can quickly and easily put it into our Python code uh, and with a few minimal changes, we can use Request and Beautiful Soup to scrape almost every website. The main thing I think that puts some people off, especially beginners in learning how to use Splash, is the fact that you need to install and run Docker to do so. So Docker could be quite daunting to some people. It is used really widely and it's really popular. It's not difficult to learn. And for what we need to do is really simple. So I'm gonna show you how you can use the Docker desktop app for Windows to create a container, which we install Splash into with just a few commands. We only need to use the terminal once um, and that's pasted in and it's nice and easy. So let's get into it. I'll show you how to install everything and how to start with a basic scraper using Splash. So as I said, to install Splash, we need to install Docker. Uh, I'm on the Splash uh, documents page right here, and it gives us some installation instructions for installing on Linux or OS X. Uh, if you're not on either of those operating systems and you're on Windows, uh, we can actually just install the Docker desktop, which I find is the easiest way to do it and to manage it. Um, I think this works on Mac as well. So go ahead and come to this URL. I'll link them all down below and you can click on download for Windows. Now I've downloaded this already. So I'm just going to run this and we are going to install the Docker desktop app. Um, I'm going to leave the install required components for WSL2 there because I do use that and I'm going to let that run. This can take a little while. So I'm going to let this go and I'll come back to you. Now it has uh, successfully installed. We'll go ahead and click, click close. Uh, and we just need to, to run it off our system. So I'm just going to hit run. Uh, the first time you run it, it takes a little while. It's going to do some setup. That's actually happening behind my camera. Uh, so once that's done, we can actually open up Docker and start using the container uh, and installing Splash. So now we've got Docker running. Uh, we've got a couple of options here. We can either go through the tutorial or we can skip it. I'm going to skip it because I know that we, I don't need to do it. Uh, and that gives us here. So it says we've got no containers running. Um, what we need to do is we need to come back to the installation instructions for Splash uh, and we need to copy this uh, install here. And this is actually a Linux command, so I'm only going to copy the second part uh, and then I'm going to run it in PowerShell. You can run it in Terminal 2 in Windows if you want to. Uh, I think most people have PowerShell, so I'm just going to use that instead. So I'm just going to hit that in. I'm just going to let that run. It's going to do some downloading and some installing. Again, this might take a couple of minutes. So once this is done, I'll come back. That has installed successfully. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and just close that out and come back to Docker. And we can see under images, we now have uh, scraping hub slash splash as an available image on the disk. If we hover over it, we get this run command. We want to click on that. And we do have optional settings that we want to use. <clears throat> so under container name, I'm just going to write the word splash. And port, you can choose whichever you one you want. Uh, the default it suggests is 8050, so I'm going to use that one. Then we can click Run, and it will confirm to us that it is running. So what we can do now is we can actually find this because this is running on our local host. We can access it via our browser. We can click on this button here. I'm just going to do it in Chrome here. I'm going to go and type in localhost colon 8050 which was the port we used. And that loads up this page. Now this means everything's working fine and, sla and Splash is available. This gives us a lot of uh, options here. We can read the docs, we can see some examples, and we can actually do some, some basic rendering on here to, to see how things work. I like to do the screenshot of multiple pages example. Website URLs there, and if I hit the render me button, what it's going to do is it's going to render those pages and it's going to take a screenshot of each of them at this moment in time uh, and give it a, uh, make it available to us to see, which is quite a cool way of showing how it works. So basically what we can do is we can now use this um, instance of Splash that we've created and are running on our Docker uh, container to access it and let it render the pages for us. We can stop our service as well by coming back to the container and clicking stop and that will shut it down. So if I try to run this now, it's not going to find anything or and if we click to start it back up again, it will just start it back up and it's come back away straight away. 
because we entered in the, the details in here. So the main thing that we want to use this for is to render JavaScript websites for us. And we want to be able to use it within our Python code. Uh, we can do this really simply. We're still going to use requests and beautiful suit, but what we're just going to need to change a couple of little things just so we put this in the middle. So basically our request is going to go from our Python code to the splash HTTP API that's going to do its thing and then it's going to return the information to us. So I'll do a demo of that for you now. So in this file, we're going to import requests, requests, and I'm going to set a URL. Um, I'm just going to use Amazon for this. I'm going to go ahead and pick an Amazon product. Uh, Any will do as a demo, uh, just so we can see it working. So actually we can use this, um, we can use this search term here. So if we put that in our URL, and if we were to do it normally, we would do r is equal to requests.get, and we would give the URL. So if I print r dot status code for this, you might be convinced to think this is working, but we get a 503, and that basically means forbidden. So if I do r dot text, we'll see in this text somewhere here, it says, are you a robot? Uh, sorry, just to make sure you're not a robot there. But to access this page via Splash, we need to send our request to Splash and then give it the URL that we want it to render for us. So to do that, instead of putting our URL here first, we want to put in the localhost URL for our Splash service, which is HTTP and then uh, localhost and colon 8050 for the port. And the service that we want to use is render. So we just type forward slash render dot HTML. Then after that, we need some parameters. So we're going to do params is equal to, and we're going to put in a dictionary. And our first key is the URL that we want to scrape. And because I've got that saved up here as URL, I can put URL in again. And then the last next one we're going to use is called wait. And I'm just going to put two in here. And that is just how long it uh, waits before it times out. Uh, for finding the page. Now, if we go and print r.text, we should hopefully get a lot more information back that looks like it does indeed resemble the actual information of the page, and it does appear to do so. Somewhere around here, there is actual some actual uh, HTML code that looks like the um, page itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly import um, beautiful soup. From BS4, import beautiful soup, and I'm going to create a soup object. Uh, we'll do soup is equal to beautiful soup. Can never spell this word. R.text, and then the HTML dot parser. And now we're going to print. My microphone's in the way. That's why I can't type. Yeah soup.title.text and now if we run that we should get the actual title of the page back uh, and we can see that matches our browser uh, up here so what we've successfully done is started uh, we've installed docker and we've installed splash we've started the splash service in the docker container and we have accessed it through our python code to render the pages for us this will do javascript um, it, you can do image blocking, you can do ad blocking the whole lot if you do the configuration right. We can see how easy it is now for us whenever we want to do dynamic pages and JavaScript, JavaScript scraping, we can just start up our Docker container, start our Splash service and send it off to there, send it off to Splash to render the page for us. And because it is, it's basically built by Scraping Hub to um, render pages to scrape, it's super quick and it's exactly how um, we would want it to be. Obviously the downside is that we are still sending the requests from our IP so we can still get blocked, but we can rotate through proxies quite easily. We can do proxies with Splash as well. I'll show you that next time. So if we just quickly come back to our Docker container, we've got some uh, information here. We can see stats of how much it's using and we can see the logs and in the logs it will show you all of the information so you could actually um, see what you've been doing so you see what you found uh, which is quite cool so that's it for this video guys i hope you've enjoyed it 
Um, I definitely recommend if you haven't already to give this a go. So let me know in the comments how you get on, what your thoughts are, how you're finding it, and also let me know what projects you're working on. Like the video if you like it, and don't forget to subscribe uh, for more content. There's lots of web scraping content on my channel already and there's more to come. So thank you for sticking around for this one and I will see you in the next one.